let's look at the reaction between iron in the plus 3 state and thiocyanate anions. When these come together, they form a, an iron thiocyanate complex that is red. Let's mix these two solutions together. And we see we get that rich red iron thiocyanate complex. Let me divide this in two so we have a reference to observe. Now let's add some potassium nitrate salt. Do you see any difference? When we add a lot of potassium nitrate salt to the solution, we see the color disappear, indicating that the reaction is shifting back toward the left. Potassium nitrate should be providing just spectator ions. What is going on here? Well, the answer lies in the fact that we've added a lot of potassium nitrate and it's affecting the neighborhood around various ions. Before we add any extra ions to solution, the neighborhood around the iron is mostly inhabited by water molecules. So there's a sphere of water molecules that move along with the iron plus three ion. When lots of nitrate is in the neighborhood, it's attracted by the negative by the uh, opposite charge, and so the neighborhood next to the iron has, in addition to water, lots of negative charges associated with it. This makes it somewhat difficult for the thiocyanate to get in through this negative barrier and react with the iron. That's somewhat a simplistic idea, but the idea that the iron is somewhat isolated now, it's more stabilized than it was before, is behind what we're seeing. So it's as though the effective reaction concentration of the iron-3 has decreased. It would appear then that the ratio of our equilibrium concentrations is not really a constant. We have not changed anything with regard to the products or reactants, and yet the equilibrium position has shifted. So this ratio does not seem to be constant. Well, what is truly constant, what does seem to be constant, is the ratio of something we call the activities of the reactants and products. Activity is nothing more than a coefficient times the concentration. So the activity is dependent upon the concentration plus some extra term. So each one of these concentrations should be multiplied by something we're calling the activity coefficient. So the activity for iron in the plus three state is the product of some term we're calling the activity coefficient for that ion times the iron three concentration. So it's essentially an efficiency factor for its reactivity. So the activity coefficient is a function of ionic strength. And ionic strength
is a measure of the average concentration of ions in solution. It's equal to one-half the sum of the concentration for each ion multiplied by its respective charge squared. This phenomenon was studied a lot in the early half of the 20th century, and one of the most successful models is now known as the extended Debye Huckel equation. And it allows us to calculate a an activity coefficient for a given ion based on the ionic strength of the system. The denominator involves several terms such as alpha, which is known as the hydrated radius, and some other constants that have been lumped together. This constant depends upon the absolute temperature in kelvins and um, the dielectric constant of the solvent. Um, this constant depends upon absolute temperature and things like uh, Avogadro's number, the dielectric constant of the solvent, Boltzmann's constant, and it also depends upon the charge of the electron. The hydrated radius is what we mean by the ion plus the solvent that sticks to the ion and travels with it as though it's one particle. And these are things that we can find in tables. The debye huckel equation works for concentration ranges or ionic strength ranges uh, up to an ionic strength equal to a tenth molar. When things get higher than that, up to about 0.6 molar, a better model that seems to fit the data is something called the modified Davies equation. That looks quite similar that the log of our activity coefficient is equal to minus 0 0.511 times z squared times the square root of mu. But now the denominator is 1 plus 1.5 times the square root of ionic strength. And then there's this extra term, 0 0.2 times z squared times mu. Let's suppose that we've mixed two solutions up, some ferric nitrate and some potassium thiocyanate such that we have a 0.002 molar iron solution and a 0.003 molar potassium thiocyanate solution. And we're going to add then some solid potassium nitrate until that is at a level 0.080 molar. Let's calculate the activity of the iron in the plus 3 state. 
So we know we need to calculate the ionic strength. It will be just half of the sum of all the ions times their respective charges squared. So we are going to need the iron times its charge squared. It's That's 3 squared or 9. We'll add to that the concentration of the nitrate and its charge squared. We'll add then the potassium ion times its charge, which would be plus 1 squared. And then finally we need the concentration of the thiocyanate times its charge or minus 1 squared, and that should give us the ionic strength. So, let's see if we can do this. Iron, 0 0.002 molar, times 3 squared or 9. Nitrate has two sources. It's going to be 3 times the iron nitrate concentration, or 0 0.006, and then we have the amount of potassium nitrate that was added, plus 0 0.08 times the charge squared, or 1. Now we add the potassium. That comes from two sources. There's 0 0.003 for the potassium thiocyanate plus the 0 0.08 for the potassium nitrate. That times the charge of 1 squared is 1. Adding the thiocyanate, we have only one source. 0 0.003 charge on thiocyanates minus 1. We square that. That's a 1. We take that sum and divide by 2, and we get a numerical value of 0 0.095 molar. This puts us in the realm of the Debye-Huckel equation. It's applicable below 0.1 molar, and we're below that, so we can calculate the log of the iron activity coefficient, and it's minus 0 0.5091 times z, or 3, squared, times the square root of 0 0.095, the ionic strength, all over 1, Plus, now we need the alpha value, or the hydrated radius, in picometers. And we can find that in a textbook. This early paper in the Journal of Ameri the American Chemical Society is a source for a lot of the data that shows up in quantitative analysis textbooks uh, on the hydrated ionic radii. Keelan gives us the effective ionic radii for a lot of common ions in terms of angstroms. One angstrom is equal to 100 picometers. So if we come down to this point in the chart, we find that iron in the plus 3 state has a hydrated radius of 9 angstroms, or 900 picometers. 900 picometers times the square root of the ionic strength, 0 0.095, and divided by 305. Numerically, that gives us a negative 0 0.7395. So the activity coefficient itself is the antilog, or 10 to the minus 0. 7395 or 0.182. This suggests that the effective reactivity of the iron has dropped 
to less than 20% of what it was before we added the potassium nitrate salt. So the activity of the iron 3 is the activity coefficient times the original concentration, 0 0.002 molar, or 3.64 times 10 to the minus 4 molar.